Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I Keshwani. We are here because we want to learn some math. Today we will talk about the concept of percentage change formula. As a matter of fact, the concept, the concept itself, the concept of percentage change formula, and the formula itself is something that we discussed thoroughly in quite a lot of detail yesterday on day number 32 or day number 33 as a matter of fact yesterday was day number 33 today is our lesson number 34 yesterday we already discussed the concept of percentage change formula today we'll apply the concept the concept of percentage change formula today we'll apply the formula itself to solve a couple of problems maybe three problems we'll see here's the first one it says it should not say Tom weekly salary it should say Tom's Tom's, Tom's weekly salary, Tom's weekly salary has gone up, we are told, has gone up from $300 to $350. The question is, what is the, approx what is the approximate percentage change? His salary has gone up, we are told, from $300 a week to $350 a week. What does that represent in terms of the percentage change approximately? That, that word is very important. In the real exam, in the real exam, you, as you know, they do not underline this word. They do, they're not going to underscore it for you. You simply have to pay attention. You simply have to realize that they have used the word approximate, which means they do not expect you to do the exact calculation, obviously. But in the exam itself, as I told you before, the word is not going to be underscored. What does it mean to underscore? I'm going to digress for a second. What does it mean to underscore? Well, it means to underline, to emphasize, to accentuate, to highlight, to bring it to your attention. I'm looking at the under under the U in my index card here to see when they, when we learned about underscore on day number twelve. Day twelve in our vocabulary lessons in our vocabulary lessons on day number twelve we learned about underscore. If you're interested in improving your vocabulary, especially if you if you want to get a decent score in the English portion of the exam, if you're preparing for any of these tests. ACT, SAT, GRE, GMAT, you need to have a decent vocabulary. Just type in vocabulary words, whichever test that you're, comparing, uh, that you're preparing for. For example, you might type in GRE vocabulary words, day 12, or SAT vocabulary words, day 12, and the video will pop right up. Watch the video and learn the word. In the real exam, they're not going to underscore it. Here, I did it because I'm a nice guy. You understand? So how do we do it? Yesterday we learned that the formula is this. We know that percentage change, percentage change is change divided by the old number times 100. We also learned that the change is change is defined as the new minus the old. We take the new number minus the old number, and that's your change. So let's do it, shall we? The new number here, the change, the new number, we're going from 300 to 350. So this is the new number. We're going from 300, from 300, that's the old number. That's our starting point because it says from to, from 300, so that's the old number, to 350. 350 is our new number, so it's new minus the old. So it's going to be 350 minus the 300 which makes perfect sense because the change now, the change is going to be positive 50 and of course we know the change has to be positive 50 because it's going up it's not going down, had it been going down then this quantity to change should have been a negative quantity had, it, had, it, had the value gone down the value is going up from 300 to 350 of course the change needs to be a positive quantity you don't actually have to make too much fuss about memorizing it just use your logic, use, use common sense you to, uh, think in a, in a rational manner the change has to be positive because it's going up Divided by the old number, the number that we started out with, the initial quantity, the beginning quantity, and that quantity is 300 times 100. And that's it, we're almost done. We end up with a 50 on the top, the change is 50 over 300 times 100. If we divide top and bottom by 100, this 100 is going to drop out, it becomes 1, and we can drop out the two zeros. So it turns out that the percentage change is, percentage change is, 50 over 3. 50 over 3. But they say find the approximate change. So let's do that. Let's do it on the top. Let's see what we can do here. 
we need to divide that number by 3. We need to divide 50 by, we need to divide the 50 by 3. Is 50 divisible by 3? What did we learn in our lesson, in the, in the previous lessons, I don't have the day in front of me here, but we learned the divisibility rule. How do we determine if a number is divisible by 3? We found, we learned that the number is divisible by 3 as long as the sum of its digits, 5 plus 0, 5 plus 0 is the sum of the digits, as long as the sum of the digits is divisible by 3, the number itself is divisible by 3. Well, 5 plus, 5 plus 0, alas, adds up to only 5, and 5, of course, is not divisible by 3, therefore 50 is not divisible by 3. However, since we are looking for approximate value, we could pretend that instead of 50, we could pretend that instead of 50, we have 51. Voila! Now 5 plus 1 is 6, and 6 is divisible by 3. We can divide 51 by 3. Let's do it, shall we? Let's divide 51 by 3. I'm going to, a little bit, I'm going to write a little bit lower so we can have the room right there. Let's divide 51 by 3. How many 3's in a 5? How many 3's in a 5? Five? 5 has 1 3. The remaining 2 goes and joins the 1 becomes 21. The remaining 2 goes and joins the 1 and becomes 21. 21 divided by 3 is 7. So it turns out that this is, this is what it was, it was 50 over 3 percentage which is, which is approximately 17 percent. Which is approximately 17 percent and of course these being the multiple choice exams, one of the answer choices is going to be 17 and that's what you need to pick. Do you understand? The one that comes closest to it is 17 percent. Let's do one more, shall we? Let's do one more. Now, it, it, if at any point at all you do not know what the hell I'm doing here, this division thing that we did here, there is a good reason for it, is because I take it for granted, I just assume, I just assume at any given video, in, in, in any given video, I just assume that if you're watching day number 34, that you have already watched all the videos before that in the series day 1 through 33. Because I just take it for granted that you have learned the concept, because we obviously do not have a luxury of repeating the same thing over and over again. It will bore the pants off you to say nothing of the fact that it will take too much time. Do you understand? Let's continue. Let's do one more problem. We are told that Bob's weight, Bob's weight goes down from 140 to 133 pound. Question is, what is the what is the percentage decrease? What's the percentage decrease? Let's find out, shall we? Percentage change, percentage change we know is is the change. It is the change which is the new minus the old. That's the, that's the change. This part is the change divided by the old times 100. The new number here it goes from 140 to 133. This two part is the new number. This is the new number. His new weight is 133. He began, he started out with 140. This is the old number. Because that was his starting weight, the old number. So the new weight is 133 minus the old, which is 140, over the old number, which is 140, times 100. 133, 133 minus 140, is going to give us a negative 7, which is just as well, which is just as well, it should be negative because the quantity is dropping, is dropping, we're going down from 140 to 133, the quantity has dropped and hence the negative sign. The negative tells us that it has dropped. Divided by 140 times 100, let's divide top and bottom by 10, if we divide top and bottom by 10 we can knock out a 0. And we end up with 7 over 14 times 10. 7 over 14 times 10. Let's do it on the top. Let's pick this up on the top. So we get negative 7 over 14 times 10. Let's divide top and bottom by 7. We divide top and bottom by 7. The 7 drops out and 14 becomes 2. We end up with 10 divided by 2 with a negative sign. So this ends up negative. 10 over 2, which is negative 5 percent. Turns out that his weight has gone down by, his weight has gone down by 
5%. Now, if you think logically, if you think intu intuitively, it makes sense. It makes perfect sense because what was his original weight? Well, how much did he weigh? He weighed originally, his old weight was 140. If it's 140, we know that 10%, 10% of 140 is 14. 14 represents 10%. Well, if 14 represents 10%, then it stands to reason that 7, 7, therefore, if 14 represents 10%, it stands to reason that 7 must represent, must represent 5% because it's half the quantity. His original weight was 140, 10% 10 of 140 is 14. If 14 is 10%, 7 must be 5%. Since his weight went down by 7 pounds, there's a drop of 5%, which is exactly what we found there. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.